Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? Jeff Mosher here alongside Adam Kaplan doing what we do on Inside the Birds. Uh, listen, we come at him at a time where it's been it's very difficult for the country, for the world, and um, we're glad to be able to do this because we got some great feedback from people who are, uh, I hope, uh, in their house, isolated. I know I have been with my family. I know you've been. I mean, I think... We're at a point now where we are starting to really gr- grasp how severe this mm. is and how yeah. important it is to stay home. So uh, we will continue to do these podcasts because, A, we would be doing them anyway. And, B, I do think we've got a lot more ears now and a lot of people who just look forward to – they almost want this podcast now to drop a, a day or a night earlier, At <laughs> We're getting requests for that. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Ha- think about, Jeff, if the league didn't go through with free agency, what we'd be doing now. Yeah. It'd be awful because because I'm dying, you know. Friday night is my night to watch. Like I I would typically watch the Sixers live. I don't. I would tape every Sixers game and work during them, and then and then after each after every every forty forty five minutes, I'd stop and watch catch up to the game. Right. Friday typically was a night that I would take the night off and watch the game in its entirety and not stop. We don't have anything to look forward to. So what I did is I I taped a bunch of thirty for thirties on ESPN. I caught up. You know. I, I caught up on um, some stuff from the combine. I taped the NFL Network's coverage. Oh, nice! So, so I caught up on that. I'm not done it yet. Uh, so Are you I, on offensive lineman running the forty? No, that, uh... <laughs> no, I'm not on that one. No, that one I might delete. But uh, no, but that's the only thing I could get out of it with all this. I don't want to say free time. Now our 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 taxes aren't due uh, on April fifteenth. Are now due July fifteenth. I believe the date is. Mm-hmm. It's actually a help for all of us in the country. Right. Some of us have an LLC and, uh, you know, all this stuff we got to do. So that gives us more time. Sure. But overall, you know, and I, we do appreciate the comments. There's no question football offers all of us a diversion. Right. And that's what we're here to do. I mean, we're, we knocked out the uh, video. We, we, we really appreciate the people saw our, our YouTube video, uh, which got a real nice uh, traffic number. And uh, the show that we did, uh, Jeff, the one we did Thursday morning. Yeah. The second biggest show we've ever done out of the couple hundred that we've done. So right. um, you would figure with free agency, people are interested in. The one thing we're going to continue to do is give you as many hints as possible of what's next for the Eagles. We've outlined everything. We started at the Combine, folks. Mm-hmm. We gave it away that they were not going to go after free agent receivers. And I remember saying it, and I could just imagine that people were not happy when we told people that. Yeah. But I'll give Howie Roseman credit. The one thing he really does in free agency, he's very disciplined. And, and we're going to get into that, but mm-hmm. free agency is you got to be careful. There's a reason why these players are available. Yep, we caution that all the time. Yep, and um, we'll talk about some of their recent free agent additions. You know, as yes. safety and linebacker in this pod. Before we get into that, Adam, I do want to just say, and and it's kind of repeating something that we just talked about. I hope everybody's safe. We hope everybody is sound and heeding the warnings. And we wish our best to everybody. And we're going to start to do some things at Inside the Birds just to help out as much as we can. And one of the ideas we came up with is, uh, and most this will be dropped on Monday morning, uh, March what uh, 23rd. What we're going to do Monday evening around 5 o'clock is the ITB virtual happy hour. <laughs> so everybody who follows the Inside the Birds Twitter account, at Inside Birds, at 5 o'clock, you tweet to us a picture of your drink, kind of raise a drink or whatever. Just tweet t- t- tweet to us a picture that you're drinking and use the hashtag ITB happy hour. And we're going to randomly select one person who tweets to us to win an autographed Eagles hat from Todd Harriman's. So we think that's something cool that we can do. And um, I just think that that unites us, right? It brings us together. Everybody's home and cooped up. So why not, you know, toast and cheers to everybody out there. So we stick together through this and, someone will win a uh, Todd Harriman signed Eagles hat. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. We did an event with uh, Todd last fall uh, mm-hmm. for uh, our show and one of our live events. And, you know, we were going to have a, a live draft event, which right now obviously is on hold. We we still like to have it, but. Yeah, it's fluid uh, right now. That's yeah, totally fluid. Say. So, but let's, let's get to it, Jeff. So. Sure. It's for agency time, my friend. A lot has happened. Most of it we expected. Uh, lots of twists and turns, though, especially, though, the trades. How about how about that that Texan trade? Uh, f- gi- giving away DeAndre Hopkins. They basically gave him away. Okay. They we'll, did. We'll, I mean that, now, by the way, I, I'm told the Eagles were heavily involved in it. Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately, they decided not to do it. I don't know what. 
I, I quite frankly, I, I here's what I know. They were involved. There were a bunch of teams involved. I have no idea how deep they went, but they mm-hmm. were involved in it. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because we've been asked a little bit, why didn't the Eagles get involved? And some of this stuff, I mean, th- this happens all the time. Whenever there's a big name who trades jerseys, why weren't the Eagles involved? Well, A, we don't know what the Texans were specifically asking for. B, we don't know a lot of things, the conversations that went on behind closed doors. But I think we can at least deduce, Adam, that they would have had to trade picks, multiple picks to get DeAndre Hopkins, I would think. And they probably, I think they definitely would have had to sign him to a contract extension. And it seems to me right now, and I think you'd agree just in how their approach is a wide receiver, the draft and younger, is that it's kind of tough to trade for a guy of, Hopkins's value, maybe the number one wide receiver in the league, give him a contract worth what number one wide receiver would make. I think eight, you know, 15, 16, 18 million, no, maybe more, that. more yeah, than that. Be, right. Yeah. It's going to be when, around 20 when you already million have, season. yeah. When you've already got all that money that somehow in some form or fashion will have to go to Alshon Jeffrey to either play for you or not play for you. Still have a lot of money going to Deshaun Jackson just for one year, but it just would have been, I think, a very difficult thing for and could could the eagles have done it maybe but that's a lot of money that would have been allocated into one position if you count the alshon and the deshaun and everybody all the other contracts if you were to give this guy an extension that paid him upwards of 20 million dollars a year all right here's what happened so this is what i think would happen you allude to some of it but here's the real story they could not, I, I don't think they could have signed javon hargrave and either sign slay uh, uh, or traded for Slay and sent, signed to extension, right. or signed Byron Jones and made the trade for Hopkins. Correct. There, the way I understood it, they were going to. They were the hard break was a major priority. They have it. We're going to as we get as we have more time in future shows. We're going to explain why the, how the defense is going to change. We hinted at the last couple shows well before Frazier started, mm-hmm. but we're, we're going to we're going to learn more about it. But they could not do what they want to get done in free agency, which is really to set up their team for the future. If they if they did all these things, so they, remember, they never they never planned on pursuing or even getting involved in the Hopkins thing. It just happened. Mm-hmm. They checked into it. But if they did that, then you you probably wouldn't have Hargrave, right? And right. that's not what they're trying to do. They, they their whole plan, as we outline at the combine, and as of Monday morning at, at six a.m., it still holds true. They were not going to get involved in the free agency at receiver. For, for, they just weren't going to do it, uh, you know, barring something unforeseen. And unforeseen means, Jeff, mm-hmm. the price has dropped so low. You go, Jesus Christ, we have to go do something. This is we never, you know, everyone's a bargain. If 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 the, the price is ten dollars, mm-hmm. it gets down to three dollars. Okay, get involved because b- get involved before they change their mind. That kind of thing. Right. So that's where it's at. All right, let's talk about the guys that the Eagles did bring in. Uh, And this happened, I believe, on Saturday. They signed both Will Parks, the safety for the Broncos, and hopefully I pronounce this right, Jatari Evans, the linebacker from the Browns. Uh, Let's start with Parks first. He's obviously – Wait, wait. Did I say the name wrong? Jatavis Brown, you mean? What did I say, Jatari? Jatari Brown? I don't know. I don't know. That I think I was uh, combining two names there. Yeah, Jatavis Brown. Jatavis Brown. Yeah, Jatavis Brown, correct. I don't know where I came up. I don't what know did either. I say? Did I say Jatari? I don't Evans? know what the hell. Yeah, I, yeah, I, you I, did. Yes, you did. Like I was Jar- Jari of, Evans. Um, <laughs> who's Evans. the uh the the guy from Philly? Uh, Jari Evans. Play, yeah, yeah, Jari Evans. Right. He used to play guard. <laughs> That's for a new States. one. That's a new one for you. Hey man, if someone's gonna bit butcher a name, it's gonna be me. You know that. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man now, dog. Uh, <laughs> so let's let's start with um Bill Bill Parks. No, Will Parks first. The, mm-hmm. the safety because this Louis is interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he kind of fits that bill where young building block safety, he's only 25 years old. Uh, he plays a position that the Eagles absolutely had to address. I'm not 100% sure what to expect. And I think fans got very excited about him as if this is like the replacement for Malcolm Jenkins. And I'm not 100% sure that that's going to be the case when the season starts. Um, I have some some personnel sources who weighed in on him, but I'm curious first for your take. Yeah, he's um, – it's not definite that he'll start, but it just depends on what they do the, really more in free, more in the draft than free agency. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this was the guy that I hinted in the last show that they were going to pursue. I, I, could, I was not allowed to say the name, mm-hmm. but I, I, I had heard that 
they were going to remember the last thing I think I threw in there was like next up safety. And there you go. Right. He didn't say uh, the next safety. Yeah. They, um, they see him doing a little Jenkins stuff, a uh, mm-hmm. movable guy. This is what I was talking about two or three shows ago that they're going to change their strategy with their defense They're It'll still be a wide nine, but the way that one source with extreme knowledge of what their plans are going to do uh, going forward, Schwartz never felt like he could run the defense quite like he wanted to. A, because Malik Jackson got hurt. Right. Uh, they were really bad at corner, as we know. Mm-hmm. A safety, they, they needed to get some youth. He just didn't think he could handle – he could get everything that he wanted in terms of personnel and the way that he wanted to structure it. Plus, as we outlined, the coaching needed to be good enough. The guys who he worked for him, they, he needed some upgrades. and So he did. He he, he moved guys, a couple guys around. We, we Jeremiah Washburn not only will be involved in scouting, Mm-hmm. But he's going to be involved in in their defensive line room, as a, as I'm told. And then obviously Matt Burke will will is going to overlook the defensive linemen mm-hmm. and be a strategist. And that's the one thing, uh, Jeff, that they want to do going forward. To sum this up, and what I've been told, strategy is going to be a big thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, personal sources really criticized Schwartz with lack of creativity the last two seasons, particularly last season. Right. Part of it's on him. Part of it's the personnel that he had, where you feel like you're hamstrung, and that's where that was at. Right. So what, what what do you think we can expect then from Will Parks? Because I've gotten two different – I've gotten a mix of opinions here uh, from yeah. an Eagle source who sh- shoots me straight. This the source will tell me if he thinks the team just signs a guy or not. You know, no one special. But he said to me that Parks' versatility makes him um, not just a good ad for the defense, but he also used the word surprise. He thinks he's going to be a surprise uh, for this team. And I thought that was pretty interesting. But I did speak with uh, a personnel man in the AFC West, not a, a general manager, but a uh, a pretty high-ranking personnel guy. And this guy said, and remember, this AFC West, so he goes against the Broncos twice. He said he's always liked him, but he emphasized he's a really good backup. And he said you wouldn't want him starting 16 games. He's a spot starter if needed. That's what I was saying. I thought he might be more of a third safety hybrid. Right. But if they had to play a game today, and this is where he he and Rodney McLeod would have to be your starting safeties if they they had to play today. Right. And I don't think um, Jalen Mills, I would be stunned if he starts at safety. That's not really the way they're thinking. Right. Jalen Mills, and we'll, 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 we'll get back to Will Parks in a second. Jalen Mills, if everybody's healthy and Jim Schwartz gets what he wants. He's going to be a specific matchup guy. It might be if if it's a tight end, that's not super fast. Yep. Um, If it's a slot receiver, who's not super fast, whatever Jim sees Jim, (laughs) because Mills is so smart and will do whatever the coaches ask. Uh They want him around, but the lack of foot speed is why you can't, you got to be careful how you use him. Right. Right. For example, he would probably not be a great matchup, I would think, against a guy. I'm trying to think of a good vertical slot in this league. Maybe a Randall Cobb. He may not even be a great matchup against Jamison Crowder, who's not fast but has excellent footwork and just knows how to get open. You know what I'm saying? He'd probably yeah. be better against a tight end or a slower slot receiver. Yeah, so – so, and then Parks. Parks has a specific role where – they have a pretty – well, he's going to do two or three things. He's going to be in sub-packages. There's no mm-hmm. question about that. Um, and, again, he's going to be a matchup guy. And this is the kind of stuff that Schwartz simply couldn't do because he didn't have the personnel to do it. Uh, if everybody's healthy, this this has a chance to be, and I knock on wood for Eagle fans, the best defense that Schwartz has put together. It, it just – and obviously – Yeah, Roseman, certainly got the best cornerback that he's had since he's yes. been here. Oh, it's not even cl- – oh, God. Jeez, <laughs> what – and okay, so let's get okay. We just talked about the two safeties. Mm-hmm. I learned a little bit more about Darius Slay. So the what what you could see because Schwartz never could really do it because he didn't have the personnel. The one thing that he Schwartz would get knocked on is the unwillingness to play press coverage. You know, giving up the all oh, so many catches in front of their DBs, and he play the it wasn't just the picket fence. Mm-hmm. It was giving up so many catches, giving up so many first downs, and obviously. The big thing was the, the the too many too many big plays. No one has given up more big plays to wide receivers than Jim Schwartz's defense. It's just that's there's somewhere between one and three in, in, in big plays to outside receivers. Right. But last season was a disaster. You, you, you kind of saw what happened. Yeah. The Miami game was the absolute worst ever. 
Well, the Min- no, no, the Minnesota game was bad. <laughs> yeah, the Minnesota. I was going to say the Minnesota game was the worst. Well, they, they at least they of- made Devontae Parker work for a few of those catches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's another thing. But the lack of press coverage, yeah. so Schwartz now could do it. There's no more excuses. Like he, the criticism that he got from people in the league, some of it was a little bit too critical because they didn't quite. I don't think these guys who grade the Eagles tape, who were these pro these pro guys from other teams mm-hmm. that are signed the Eagles, they just go by what they see. They don't really know. Or understand how much Schwartz is asked to do because he just doesn't have the personnel. Now, Roseman has gotten him more resources. And by the way, he's going to get a corner in the draft, probably a safety too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they've lost, don't forget, 20% of the draft resources due to the Slay trade. But getting back to Slay, now he could he doesn't have to play man sides anymore where they go, man, now, now you right. can travel him. But here's mm-hmm. the question. If you travel him, Right now, the Eagles don't have another starting corner. They're going to have to get one, which we, I strongly suspect will be in the second round. I know we, I answer, I, I, you'll see the mailbag which was posted, um, which was posted. Mm-hmm. You'll see I answer the question about where I think they're going to go in the draft a little bit. I mean, we're still a ways away, right? But Jeff, would you not agree if the draft happened to take place right now, they've got to go receiver one, corner or receiver two, and if they get the receiver in two, then they go the corner in three. Look, uh, you know what? In that order is fine. I think you could throw safety. I wouldn't be yes. upset if yeah. they went wide receiver, corner, safety, wide receiver, corner, safety on their first six, six picks or All any right. kind of variation of that. Question. Wide receiver, wide receiver, corner, corner, safety, safety, whatever. Just come out with two of each as, okay. as long as they're good. I don't don't force it, but right. this is You're a right. good draft for them. Absolutely position. right. But here's my question. Mm-hmm. If they go first round receiver and they don't go, they don't go till fourth, the fourth, fourth round, Let's say they go with Jalen Rager, who's who, who I'm pretty certain is going to go in the first round. I'm getting a lot more intel on him. I told you. I, I put it out there. He's going to go higher than people think. Yeah, he is. He, he definitely he won't get out of the first round. Yeah. He I was told he was running back in the four threes now that he lost the weight, by the way. Yeah, he lost 10 pounds. And I, yep. I saw uh, he's pretty jacked, and he's a high-character kid. But let us let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. If they draft one in the first round and wait till the fourth, who the hell is going to start for them at receiver? Well, uh, they, Deshaun Jackson's coming back, correct? He is, but how much can he re- – he did pet on him? Well, you can say that about everybody. It's not like Deshaun his well, whole career hurt. he's been missing the entire yeah, he's, year. He's he missed gets, games Yeah, but there, he gets but... hurt. Well, he's still on the roster, so we have to actually consider him. Um, uh, the, okay, the... So, so so let's talk with the rotation. Right. It'll be a rookie. It'll be D-Jax. Right. J.J. is going to have – or Thago Whiteside is going to be on the roster. He'll be no worse than the fifth. Right. Okay. That's not good enough. Well, but hold I'll, on, hold on, hold yeah. on. Because yeah. if this fourth round pick you use on a wide receiver is somebody that ordinarily would go in the third or second round of a different draft because this is so deep, then okay. As long as you hit on a guy like Terry McLaurin was a third round pick last year. There were a couple guys in the fourth round last year that had good rookie years. You don't need this second wide receiver to come in and have an eleven hundred and eight type no, of year. No, but he's going to have to play. First round receiver is good. Yeah, but he's going to have to play the fourth rounder. Well, that's so you... look. If if Deontay Burnett and if Craig oh, if, Davis, come on, come on. No, my point is Deontay Burnett's not a very good wide receiver. He came in and made plays last year. If a fourth round pick, who is supposed to be third or second round in any other year, is on the team, then he should be able to make the plays of a third or fourth receiver. Yeah, I. <sighs> They, whoever they get. You, you, you know this. You know this. You can't fix everything in one know. Uh, uh, <laughs> I know what's so funny. Okay. You got two tight ends for that reason, by the way, also, the way, so that you can only play two two receivers at one time. And, and John Lynch said I could say this. Okay, so I was in John Lynch's office, the GM of the 49ers two years ago uh-huh. at training camp, and we were talking about how this, how you know they they overtook a you know bad roster and they a roster that just didn't fit a lot of what they wanted to do and. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, you have a lot of work to do. And then he, he he reached into his desk and he showed me this mantra that he and he and Kyle Shanahan had, have laminated. It says you cannot fix every issue in one offseason. Right. So as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, I got to bring this up. You're right. <laughs> well, no, you're true. absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But but the thing is, we've been saying for four months now, this cannot happen again with this receiver issue. It cannot mm-hmm. happen. No, and, it and, can't. It can't. But, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, again, this is why I don't think – there's some rumor out there that Zach Ertz is getting traded. I don't think there's any what, merit to it. What, what, where is this? What, 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 oh, some another, internet Another blogger. fake blogger? Yeah, yeah I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, Florio I, Jones, by the way. It, well, that one got <laughs> shot. Yeah, Florio wrote up for Pro Football Talk. It was kind of funny. Uh-huh. Um, 
So, let it, but but the point yeah, is, you got Goddard, you got Ertz, and you only yeah. need two other wide receivers. But, by the way, Sean yeah. and a rookie, or yeah. Greg Ward and a and a fourth. I mean, you you'll have guys as long as you have two receivers. All right. So you just, I just want to touch on one thing with Ertz and Goddard. Mm-hmm. Ertz, we were we put this on our show. We must have said it ten times. They've been negotiating for months. Uh, they the structure. I don't think Ertz was comfortable with. The Eagles do a they do contracts a certain way. Right. Um, they'd like to get it done. Yeah, Ertz would like to get one done, but well, the reality is, yeah, they have to get a structure. Done. So, so just to understand also, that, I think Hooper had to sign his contract, and Greg Kittle will probably have to sign George Kittle. Yeah, George I'm sorry, Kittle. Jeez, boy, yeah. I'm butchering names left and right today. Ron Kittle, remember Ron Kittle? <laughs> Ron Kittle, good pull by White Sox yeah. and Yankees. Right? Yeah, the, uh, what he? I, he I'm so pathetic. I, I, I was a huge fan of his with the White Sox. I was Sox. too. <laughs> oh, he was like Dave Kingman for those of you who are over fifty. Absolutely. Or, 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 Con Kingman, he he was he couldn't hit. All he was, it was either home run or strikeout. Home yeah, run or Rob Deer, he was in right. That oh, mode. another one. Yes, Rob <laughs> Deer, number twenty two for the Brewers. Yes, exactly. Yes. But I but want yeah, to mention. I think Zach's not going to do anything until both Hooper and Kittle have their contracts because it wouldn't be wise for him to do that unless he was just offered way more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So so one thing I do, the Eagles have waited forever. I should say forever. They the, the whole idea of drafting Goddard would be. Yeah, not only would he replace Ertz, you know, when Ertz turns 32 or 33, in, you know, four years down the line, but what they want is a 12 personnel offense. They were dying for this. They knew what this could do if these guys could stay healthy at the same time. And we we saw glimpses of it, Jeff, this past season, mm-hmm. but we're not there yet about what they think it could be. So th- this 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 could be it, and this is Goddard's third year. And remember, he the, the problem is, as we reported on our show uh, months ago, he had that calf injury, which he suffered like the first day of training camp, which no one knew about. They knew about it, but they didn't find out about it until two weeks later. Right. It took him nearly, the I'm told, half the season to get it right. Hmm. So so they get this thing going, get that speed at white out. I, I remember Ertz saying, uh, when I hosted his event for Thuzio last February, and I told mm-hmm. him, I said, hey, man, I think you guys might be going after Deshaun, and he got excited about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What he said was, and after Deshaun, after the Eagles traded for him, is that how are you going to cover us if you've got Deshaun out there and you got two talented tight ends? Yeah, and that's what, what could have want. been. That's what they want. Yeah, it was supposed to be what could have been, right? Yes. Uh, real yeah. quick before we move yeah. on to the linebacker, um, we're getting asked a lot. Why wouldn't the Eagles have tried to get Von Bell? It's a fair question. He's young. Uh, I, I imagine that money is going to be a big part of that, just like we talked with Hopkins. This guy might get paid a decent amount of money. And I don't know if how he wanted to play with that. Yeah, look, it, it's it's kind of like I said with with Hopkins. I mean, the Eagles looked at it, they talked about it, they ultimately didn't do it. I, I don't know how deep it went, mm-hmm. but I know they were deep in discussions about potentially doing it. But they just wind up. I don't even know that they even made an offer. <laughs> so we need to be careful how we frame it. But they right. definitely looked at it, okay, and considered it. But the the problem is, it would you you can't. They've had this plan. And you have to make a decision. You can't. You you can't pay everybody with this without a salary cap. They would have gotten Hopkins, I'm sure. Right. Uh, right. And I know I make fun of the salary cap because people make way too much about it. It really means next to nothing these days. It did when I first covered the league. It was everything. That's all I cared about. I kept an Excel file of every team's contracts and cap figures and acceleration. Mm-hmm. When I started seeing that it's wound up not being a factor anymore, I'm like, I moved on for stuff that's it's so trivial. Yeah, it what, is, but it isn't, yeah. right? I mean, because it's still – I understand what you're, you're saying is it's never an obstacle because you can always create money. Yeah, exactly. But in what order I, to create money, Adam, yeah. right, you have to move money around and extend certain guys or yes, cut guys. Yes. And the Alshon yeah. Jeffrey, which is a very rare bad – strikeout. That was a strikeout. Bad strikeout by yeah. Howie is an example yeah. of, yeah, you created money, but look what happened. Look what were the ramifications of that were. So now, now, now that's a good point you make. So, so what I mean is, what I look for, and this is a little hint. I'll give you a little nugget out here. What's way more important to me because this decisions always tell contracts always tell you a story. Mm-hmm. I look for roster bonus dates, uh, gu- guaranteed conversions, and fifth day or the third day or the first day of the league year. Those mean more to me than anything. Mm-hmm. There was the the cap. I don't give a shit about. To be honest with you, I right. when it comes to this team. But you you make a great point though. The one I do want to know who got restructured mm-hmm. because as I outlined a couple of shows ago, those calf figures in twenty twenty one. We'll, we'll develop, now that we've got I got Hargraves deal on my computer here and I'm looking at it. Mm-hmm. They got a real problem, way worse than I expected with twenty twenty one with certain calf figures. 
there's going to be some tough decisions. And I'm not just talking about Malik Jackson. Even if he has a monster year, Jeff, the, the Eagles are going to go through what the Niners went through. Right. I'd, I'd reported that the Niners are good. What they're doing is not sustainable. They're going to have to move someone. Uh-huh. I didn't think it would be our, uh, uh, Buckner. God, that was a little surprising to me. It was. So you're going to have to make a decision. The Eagles are going to have to make a decision on what they're going to do after the season. They're going to have some very tough decisions, mm-hmm. but it's not something they don't know. Right. Um, there's certain things you could do to manipulate the cap. Joe Banner was talking about it before we move on here. He said he thought – I thought this was interesting. He did an interview it was either on WIP or um, – it's probably WIP – that the Eagles have done a smart thing with the restructures. I know he's not a fan of doing it, but because the cap, the cap is so big now, you can make smart bets and keep as many of these great players as you can. But as the Eagles learn, if you – even if you go 9 out of 10 on restructures – the one you miss on on Jeffrey, it makes it difficult. It, it does take up that that dead money that's yeah. going to hit if they cut him is detrimental. All right, I want to talk more about the rest of the defense, uh, yeah. the new addition linebacker, and then some things that are out there. Uh, before we do that, I want to say a big thanks, as always, to our friends at phlsportsnation.com. They are continuing, like we are, to put out content covering the Sixers, Phillies, Eagles, Flyers. Make sure you head on over to phlsportsnation.com, and we thank them. Uh, for being great affiliates of Inside the Birds. Also, now's a good time to stop real quick and pause for a word from our great sponsors. Hey, it's Jeff Mosher. Adam Kaplan and I love using Anchor for our Inside the Birds podcast every week. It's so user-friendly, anyone can create their own podcast, and you should too. Just download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Anchor gives you everything you need to start your own podcast from your phone or computer. Its creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast per, for a professional sound, and Anchor will distribute your podcast for you to Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and so many other platforms. It can be heard by everyone, just like Inside the Birds. You can also make money from your pod with no minimum listenership. What are you waiting for? Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to create your podcast today. The Earn Your Leisure podcast, hosted by Rashard Blau and Troy Millings, examines the latest trends in finance. Listen as the duo interviews entrepreneurs from various industries as they break down their business models and share some of their hardships and triumphs that they've experienced along the way. Want to learn about the real estate game? Unclear how the stock market works? They gotcha. Interested in starting a truck company, vending machine business, or investing in the mobile home market? Then check them out as they've got you covered. Earn Your Leisure is a college business class mixed with pop culture. So if you want to become better equipped in business, head over to Spotify or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and follow the Earn Your Leisure podcast today so you never miss an episode. All right. Uh, I don't really want to spend, Adam, that much time on Jatavis Brown because I don't know what people are expecting, but um, I he's, to me, a depth guy who, if they're in a three-linebacker base, he might be the will linebacker but um you know i'll let you comment but i still think that when they go into the year unless they make any other moves free agency or draft that nate gary and tj williams are kind of like your main linebackers unless they upgrade again yeah so charger source told me that um like the kid very undersized really super athletic a uh, pretty significant injury history yeah uh, out, of his, out of his four seasons he only played one full season uh two different injuries last season he, he just didn't Mm-hmm. They just they were they didn't want him back. He was in a situation where he just didn't contribute like they were hoping. Mm-hmm. Uh, really showed a lot of promise in seventeen and eighteen. Nice story of them uh, of development. He just he's very small. Uh, he's somewhere between two twenty five and two twenty eight. Uh, they're gonna be, the, the good thing is the way the scheme is the Eagles are gonna play it. The, the linebackers are gonna get a lot of protection. Mm-hmm. But man, if you get to the second level, these Jeff these Eagles linebackers are pretty small. They are pretty small. And again, as you mentioned, this whole defense is predicated on the linemen getting at the quarterback. So they let those offensive linemen get into the second level and you got to be durable. You know, that was a big issue with Jordan Hicks. It was a great playmaker, but it was not durable. He constantly had big pulling guards and and, uh, centers coming at him. And that's going to be the case for whoever plays behind the defensive line again this year. Unless, of course, they switch things up that we talked about. I'm not sure how much they're going to switch up. You're still going to have big bodies. And as you mentioned, this guy, uh, the two thing, the, the one consistent thing I got from the personnel men is that he tested really well coming out of college. He went to Akron, um, but again, he has not. He's very athletic, but I guess that, that his gift is his curse. 
because he just can't stay healthy. So it does yeah. remind me a little bit of of the thing. I, uh, Jordan Hicks on a way different level. Hicks was a, a tremendous linebacker, but very athletic, but also prone to injury. Yeah, Hick, Hicks is a way better in terms of talent. Is way more talented, but Hicks yeah. simply was never the same after that one monster year. And the Eagles let him walk. They didn't even make an offer to bring him back. They they just made a decision because he just couldn't stay healthy. With Brown, you get concerned because he's, his frame is so thin. Mm-hmm. How, how could how, is he going to hold up? And the, I'm told, by the way, the contract is minimum salary benefit. Um, that's about as low as it gets. Now, mm. the good thing about signing a guy to a one-year deal, he's on a prove-it deal. He's got everything, you know, this is what Joe Banner started and then Howie Roseman took that over. They loved guys on a one-year deal because they, who are prove it deals. And by the way, he's only 26, just turned 26 in February. Right. He's got a lot of football ahead of him. He's a pretty good kid. Uh, Char- Mike Chargers guy spoke highly of him. He just said, look, he never could take advantage of the great, the, the really good play he had in eight, 17 and 18. Quite mm-hmm. fr- if he would have had a good year last year, there was zero chance they were letting him go. He just <laughs> didn't play well. He got hurt. Well, that's, uh, you know, uh, Bill Parcells used to always say your best ability is durability, right? And uh, Availability, clearly, yeah. Availability, but the yeah. last thing yeah. this Eagles team needs is a guy who can't stay healthy. I mean, they've had that. Nobody's probably been hurt more than them at every position in the last few years, and uh, they, can't, they can't afford to have another guy do, do who comes here and do, just do, can't do, stay healthy. I agree. Do, do you think they'll draft a linebacker? I think they will. I do. I really do think they will. Now, do I think they're going to draft them in the first three rounds? Doubt it unless round three comes along and they just don't love the safeties and there's some good linebackers. But, uh, you know, I do think that because you know, I make fun of them, Adam, about linebackers and <laughs> fans really get on them. It's not that they don't value linebackers or linebacker play. They It's a salary cap world. You pay a lot of money to your, your, your defensive line. You're paying a lot of money now to your cornerback. Uh, in the past, they've paid some pretty good money to Malcolm Jenkins and McLeod as safeties. There's just got to be a place where it gives, and linebacker is a position where it gives. But they have, if you go look, it was just two years ago that they had, when they won the Super Bowl, that they had Hicks, who was a third-round pick, Kendricks, who was a second-round pick, and Nigel Bradham, who was a free agent signing. And then the year after, because Nigel had such a good year, they signed Nigel to a competitive linebacker contract. He was, for that year, he was among the top five or ten linebackers paid at his position. So it, they just have to pick and choose their spots with line. It's not that they hate linebackers. I feel like the fans just think, why don't they ever sign a linebacker? Why? Don't-? Well, if they did and they gave, you know, really big money to Corey Littleton, then you probably wouldn't have Darius Slade. Oh, they, they, right. Exactly. You just got, you, you got to pick your spots. What I'd like to see them do. It's funny. Littleton was an undrafted free agent. Mm-hmm. You don't have to draft them high, but whether you draft them late, middle rounds, or you sign them as undrafted free agents, you have to develop them. And yes. what else I said with Ken Flagel, where's the development of these linebackers? Okay, Nick Gary's developed as a former fifth rounder, but he's not a good player. He's just no, okay. I agree with you. I agree. That's a position that I yeah. think we can scrutinize and be fair and say, where's your, what are you proud of at that position what are you, that you're putting out on the field? Well, Nick Gary, look, look, look G- he's Gary's, okay. it's, he's been a good story, but... What I'd like to say one year when you when we review the Eagles, wow, they actually have a Pro Bowl linebacker. This is interesting. They developed this guy, or an almost Pro Bowl, a guy that the fans look at and say, you know what, he's a good football player. Mm-hmm. How about that? Yeah, could be T.J. Edwards. It? Who knows? They, I know they really like him, and he's almost certain to start. Maybe he's that next guy that they develop. We'll see. Right. Uh, I think the one thing we can say about these two free agent signings, Parks, and uh, I'll make sure I get this name right again, Jatavis Brown, Adam yeah. is. It, to me, it's also a test, not just of the coaching, but right of the scouting department, because these are two uh, young kids. But, you know, if you go back two years ago and you look at how they got Corey Nelson from the Broncos, they were hoping he would fill uh, a role in their linebacking staff. He didn't even make the team. He did not play well in training camp. And it was just a, a failure all around. So these two guys, maybe more so, anything, more so really parked anything. here. Yeah. Say that again. Yeah. It didn't cost them anything. No, it didn't. Uh, for, uh, but the problem is, though. And I know this for a fact. They thought he would start when they signed him. That's right. That's the problem. It's not the money's irrelevant. They, 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 that doesn't cost him. It's the time on task. It's the yes. scouting. It's you, you've spent this time investing and, and reviewing this player. You, you missed on the player. And you did, that means because you tar- targeted him. To, now, they got rid of him early. They, the good thing is they realized that it wasn't going to work. They right. got him real early. 
you know, Zach Brown, another guy that you and I debated. I think you and I are on opposite sides. Although you 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 were you were thinking he might get cut before the season started, mm-hmm. um, he wound up getting cut because he ran his mouth a little bit. Uh, by the way, he never, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think he'd he, sign he, anywhere, right? Yeah, if he did, he it, he was cut again. But they got to get this linebacker thing right. They've got uh, your know, free agency has been very good to them since Roseman came back in '16. But man, whether it's draft or free agency, they've got to develop some continuity. That's what they've been. You mentioned the 17 linebackers. Uh, and, and Bradham was here for a while, so that was a really good free agent signing. Uh, Hicks was not how he didn't draft him. Chip did in fifteen, mm-hmm. but that obviously hit a. He looked like he's going to be a superstar. Unfortunately, too many injuries. Who was the other guy that they had? The other, oh, oh, Michael Kendricks. That was that was a Roseman pick many many years ago. But yeah, second rounder. They got to get continuity. That's my point at linebacker. Yes, I would agree. Uh, real quick on the cornerback situation, there was a report on ProFootballTalk.com that Rasul Douglas could be had. In the trade market, do you see anybody giving up anything for Rasul Douglas? The only thing I could see is a conditional seventh round pick. Mm. Um, he just, Jeff, the summary with him is he was given a wonderful opportunity. There, there, there were weeks last season in training camp where you're like, oh my, well, by, by the way, just like he looked in OTAs, he was their best corner in OTAs. Mm-hmm. You're like, you know what? Wow, the uh, third year, the, the the light's going on for him. Well, it got turned out. He could right. never play with any consistency at all. Mm-hmm. Two good weeks, one bad one, one good game, one very good game, two bad ones. I think he's just frustrating. He's on the final year of his deal. And like Cindy Jones, you see flashes, but... I, Obviously, they're going to take. If, if anybody wants him, I think he's gone. Right. I just, it's, it's kind of a, it is what it is. Yeah. I, I wish them good luck. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But I think it, what it shows is again that they're remaking the p- position. They're probably going to draft at least one, probably yeah. two guys in the draft. Two guys you can preferably run. And you start to look at the numbers, right? If you, if you say Slay, Avante Maddox, Cravon LeBlanc, and Sidney Jones are probably going to be on the team. Sidney might be a wild card there, but that's four. You're going to draft two guys. I mean, Rasul Douglas was no sure shot to make the team. He's going to have to compete for a roster spot. So if they can get something for him, I could see why they would try to get an extra right. pick. But right now, as we stand, if they trade Douglas, A, they don't have a starting outside corner opposite Slay. Mm-hmm. You cannot go into the season with three outside corners. You just can't. You have to have four. Right. And you only need one slot. And the hope is if one of your four outside guys, one of those guys could slide inside. Mm-hmm. Jones, as you outlined very well, Jeff, where our listeners is not comfortable playing inside. It's very clear. Maddox is clearly a, a tremendously talented slot corner. He was not the same, Jeff, after he hurt his neck when he ran into Sidejo. <laughs> Who could uh, expect him to be? He almost right, like, right. He just wasn't the same. Yeah. Um, he's fine. He's going to be a good football player. Uh, no, no doubt about it. But they've got to, they've got to clear this, this, this outside corner situation opposite Slay. It, it's, it's ongoing. It's an on va- ongoing evaluation. One more thing before we get out of corner. You might remember Trevor Williams from the Chargers. Penn State. Penn State. Yeah, yeah. He's telling a kid. He just he, he got hurt. Um, the problem is he got hurt in 18, 19. The Chargers gave up on him. Right. He may factor. He may factor. He's He's got an outside chance to make it. We'll, we'll, we're not going to deal with him r- much right now, but. Uh, once we get into OTAs in June and July and so forth, we'll, we'll talk more about it. Definitely. I want to move on and talk about what's next here in free agency. Yeah. You know, we're, we're past that frenetic week. However, two things stand out, right, About from an Eagles standpoint. One, a lot of those wide receivers who we said the Eagles wouldn't be in on, ha- no one else has been on them either. There's a lot, you know, the guys like Robbie Anderson, Demarcus Robinson. Well, they are, right, with Anderson – Here's the issue, Jeff. He well, wants I, oh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I yeah. shouldn't have said weren't in on. I just meant weren't likely to to spend a lot of money for. Yeah, that's it. The latter, you're right. So the problem is, here's what happened. I, I've been checking on this, and um, we'll get to Brashad Perryman in a second. Uh, Anderson was people around the league believe he wants twelve to four. He wanted twelve to fourteen million. Obviously, mm-hmm. that's not happening. He's really based on his injury and off the field history. A nine to ten million a year player, despite his obvious ability to get downfield. He's a really but you know, he's pretty gifted. Yeah. He doesn't play to his list of size. He's somewhere between six two and six three, but he didn't play like that. He plays like he's five eleven, six feet. Even with all that being said, he's a talented guy. Yeah, the Jets, my Jets sources told me they want him back. The app they developed great chemistry with, with uh uh Darnold, but 
he's not, he needs to understand, and I'm sure his agent's realizing this, you, what he ought to do, and he he could do it, what I think will happen if he doesn't have a deal by Tuesday or Wednesday, you sign a Alshon Jeffrey 2017 uh, deal. What did Jeffrey sign for? One year, 10 million, something like that? One year, nine. Plus one, nine and, and a half with a chance to get to 14, I believe. Yeah. Right, right. So, so, so that's all you do. He's still a young guy, 26 years old. Uh, and that's it. Look, the Eagles, uh, we, we nailed this one at the combine. We said, look, the what I'd heard was um, they want what, – what the Eagles want to do is they want Wentz to grow with whoever they draft. And the, these guys are going to develop great chemistry on and off the field. They want guys who are going to fly to Texas, wherever Carson has his off-season home. If Carson wants his guys to be with him and work out, they're going to be there. Right. They want these guys to grow together. And when you start bringing players from other teams who don't know your culture, Jeff, 2017, these things just don't happen. Mm -hmm. I I don't want to say the Eagles got lucky, but they did to a certain extent. I give the pro department. They did a tremendous job of scouting, and uh, they got that character stuff right. But you got to be careful how many guys you bring in with histories of issues, whether it's on the field or off the field. Anderson last season has no issues, but – you got to be careful. So to summarize it, that's kind of why I think with an asterisk, the asterisk is if these numbers come some so far down, they get to, to Walmart prices. I mean, how do you – Brashad Parman, let's get to him, Jeff. Yeah. I think I probably overvalued it. I had heard 8 to $10 million might have been his range. Right now you're probably looking at $5 million per season, maybe 6 if you're lucky. Man, I would get in on that. I would, but <laughs> the Eagles – he's a good kid. He's never been in trouble. Yeah, he well, had the interest. You know, history. someone clued me in though, and yeah. I didn't think about it, but right. he was drafted by Baltimore. Yes. Uh, Andy Weidel came from Baltimore. Joe Douglas yep. came from Baltimore. Yep. So yep. if they just didn't love what they saw out of him, maybe they don't believe that those six games in Tampa was the real uh, Brashad Perriman, or maybe there's just something about Perriman that they just felt didn't work from the start. So I don't know if. Andy Weidel would want to go down the same road again. Yeah, it is a good. I didn't think about it. I would hope that people don't just get locked in like that, where you had a bad experience once, so you shut the door on a guy because you know. I know, but but here's the thing. See, let's let's say let's say he winds up doing a a two year deal for twelve million with a one year structure. That's still a starting NFL receiver. Mm -hmm. He has not shown that he could be a full time NFL receiver starter. He's sort of a rotational deep threat. Maybe if everything works out, he's a 30-play game guy out of 60 plays, maybe half the snaps. Mm-hmm. That doesn't equate to $6 million. That's a 3 or $4 million a year guy. All right. That's so, a problem. So, but so, I, I'm yeah. a, you know, I, I like Perriman. It's not a secret. But, oh, well, what can you do? Well, we'll see what happens with him and the other receivers as the week goes on. Yeah. Uh, you saw my guy Laquan, Laquan Treadwell now signing with the Falcons, right? Yeah. Now, they don't – they don't um, they're stockpiling first round picks, by the way. Yeah, they don't. Uh, no, I don't, I don't want. To, I don't want to take a shot at the guy. He, he it, it, I'm happy for the kid. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad he's still playing the league. Uh, the thing is, he just doesn't run real well at all. And the problem with him was, he was a physical receiver. Was it at, at Ole Miss? If I'm not mistaken, is that where he played? Yes. He was. He was. He was a physical go after guy, but every the teams that liked him completely over the fa- overlooked the fact that he can't run. Yeah. And that's uh, kinda... I, I've challenged you on this, and I will continue. I've watched five mm. hours of tape on the guy. He can get open. He can't catch. That's been his biggest problem well, at the level. When he gets the ball, gets his hands, it gets dropped. So we'll see. I don't know if he's fixed it, Adam. You're right. You might go to Atlanta and just have the same issue. But if he can actually hold on to the ball, I think he'd be surprised about his – you're right. I'm not saying he's a burner, but you don't have to be a burner to get open. He knows how to get open. It's catching the ball that has, that's has part been of it. at the NFL yeah, that, that, I know this. Their coaches – from talking to the coaches, they they were really down on him for the last couple of years, and they uh they brought him back because they had no depth at receiver. Yeah, uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Good for him. He must be like the the Aguilar to here, you know, where you just try and try and it just doesn't. I mean, at least yeah, but the, was yeah, but, but Nelly was incredible. In the, yeah, they're, they're yeah, seventeen. I I you know about yeah. Obviously, everyone knows by now he signed a one year deal. So it's a light deal. Um, Nelson had that knee issue that um I think he felt like people were pressuring him to play. I'm told by a source. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just needed to leave. I, I know people were killing me on Twitter on on Saturday over him. I put a couple <laughs> comments out there. 
folks, look, I get it. The, the, the fans just really, he sucks, he sucks, he's terrible. Man, it's like they forgot how good he was in 2017. He, he huh? was bad last season. I'm not, I'm not denying yeah, that. Of course he was. But, but you know. He's, fans he's, want you to say he sucks. That's what they want. I mean, I, he had I, the I, biggest I, catch of the year in 2017. Nick Foles comes in. It's third and eight against the Rams. You know, uh, Carson goes out with a knee injury, and they still need oh, to get that, that first Seahawk down. game. The, the, every, yeah. He was so good, and it's uh, – Nelly need to get out of his own way. He, we know what happened in sixteen. It's a good, you know. Hopefully, he revives his career with the Raiders. Yeah. All right. Real quick. Um, if it's not going to be wide receiver, uh, quarterback. I know ah, they brought back yes. Nate Sudfeld, but it's really just right now Carson, Nate Sudfeld, and Kyle Lauletta. Anything there? Yeah, I'm told that they're evaluating the backup, the veteran quarterback market, including mm-hmm. I'm told Joe Flacco. They have some interest in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the issue with Flacco is this. He has a neck injury. Um, I'm told he's not decided whether he's going to have surgery or not. Uh, you know, this is a situation with with Joe that his overall overall well being is way more important than playing football right now. He has to decide what he wants to do. I do believe, from what I'm hearing, he can pass a physical, mm-hmm. but that's you know when you talk to teams around the league on players who suffered injuries like this, it's about risk assessment, All right? And that's kind of what I think. Uh, Joe has to decide personally, and teams have to do. But when we get back to the Eagles, uh, look, Nate Sudfeld um, took a small step back last season. They still like him. That's why they brought him back. Uh, Nate is so gifted, uh, great arm strength, high character kid, athleticism. You know, he he got knocked for his lack of, of athleticism at uh, at IU, but uh, that he lost a lot of weight. You know, he was told to put on weight at IU. I'm told he lost a lot of weight, hmm. um, and he's he's he can play, but. They just don't seem be to be willing to just hand him the reins of the backup for whatever reasons I don't know. Right. Now, that may wind up happening. Don't forget about Josh McCown, who will make a decision, I'm told, in June, okay. whether he's going to play again. Remember, he's rehabbing. But right. Flacco is one of the names that they're looking at. But, Jeff, when you look, really look at the landscape, you know, Brian Hoyer, I, I texted with Brian on Sunday. He's mm-hmm. happened to be in New England where he's got a chance to start, at least right now. Oh, I would think so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, when you look at it, Blaine Gabbard, I think, is going to go bl- back to Tampa. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a that's a guy that Bruce Arians really likes. Right. I mean, who's out there? Did, did Case Keenum sign somewhere? Yep, he did, yep, right? Yep. He found a job. He's going to be the backup in Cleveland. Right. And Colt uh, McCoy, I believe, is signed somewhere. Yeah. He's he's with the Giants, I think. Yeah. A- something AJ like Mc- that. Yep. Hey, Jay Look, I think. Yeah. yeah I think he's Flacco back. would be a really, really, really good backup to have. I guess the one thing I wonder is, I know he didn't love the game plan in Denver last year. He was kind of outspoken and the guy who was in charge of the offensive game plan last year is i didn't hear that you heard that really? was rich gangrel oh yeah i mean you can google that he, he was likes... okay yeah yeah it, okay. it was out there that he he you know it was after a loss so it might have just been an emotional thing but he questioned yeah, I, play I, uh i heard they they were good i heard they actually were good well, that's good um, all right yeah. so you got marty morningweg who also coached him uh you know who's, oh who's yeah part well, of the i forgot about that yeah yeah, yeah we'll so, see i i i don't know i the um when you look at the quarterback landscape, it's bad, man. They're all gone. All the good backups. Now, well, Jameis Winston is an outlier. He's tremendously gifted, but they're not signing Jameis Winston. They're not, they have no interest in Jameis Winston. Uh-huh. So it's a matter of Matt Moore is still out there. He, um, Blake Bortles is out there. Trevor mm-hmm. Simeon. You mentioned Simeon in s- several shows ago. Yeah, I like Simeon as a backup. He's not bad. Yeah, not he's bad. not bad. That's about it, folks. Yeah, no, I would think so. All right, well, the Joe Flacco thing is something to have our our radar up about because that would be a really good backup as long as he's healthy and, and can get in there and play if he needs. I'd be pessimistic. I, I I only be pessimistic for Joe because this is a neck injury, mm-hmm. and we just have to see. I hope uh, I hope I hope he's with the team this season. And I've covered Joe since he was at Delaware as a senior, and uh, actually, believe it or not, I went to watch him play as a senior at Villanova. Uh huh. Um, so I've known the family for for God fourteen years. It's um. How great would it be if he signed with the Eagles to finish his career? How yeah, that would be that? pretty cool, especially being, uh, as you mentioned, a, a South Jersey guy from Audubon. So that would be, that's ca- right. that'd be good. That's right. All right, well, that's going to do it then. Listen, I, I would, just before we get out of here, uh, make sure, uh, listeners, go to InsideTheBirds.com this week. We're going to have a lot of good stuff. First of all, Andrew DeCecco has done two really good tape, all 22 breakdowns on Javon Hargrave and Darius Slay. So if you haven't seen them yet, Go check it out. He's got the, uh, you know, he made the gifs of Slay and Hargrave and what they do <laughs> well, cool. yeah. what they don't do well. He's going to do one coming up on Will Parks this week. So he's been doing great breakdowns using the gifs and everything like that. So make sure you continue to check it out. He's also going to have a story about Vinny Papali from University of Delaware. Vince Papali's son uh, played wide receiver 
at UD, who was supposed to do the pro day thing again this year, Adam, but obviously with all the cancellations, it's put him in a tough spot, but he's trying to get a job and it would be nice for a local kid to be able to latch on. You're going to have an NFL notebook, right? Kaplan's corner. Well, actually, no, the month, as you can see on Monday, oh, I'm sorry, you mailbag. See, you're right. Yeah. Mailbag. I answered 10 questions. Wow. Uh, there's a Josh Gordon question in there, by the way. Oh, good. Which, interesting. Uh, it's interesting. I, I have some history with Josh Gordon in terms of covering him, and the Eagles were, the Eagles were, uh, the Browns tried to pull him off in the Eagles many years ago. They weren't interested, but I, get, I, I kind of detail that story. Right. Uh, we answer a lot of the questions you guys have. Some great questions, and we appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to continue to do mailbags. I'll have some stuff. I've got some interesting stories. So make sure you're checking out InsideTheBirds.com for all the great written coverage that we're able to give you through our website. And again, Monday, the 23rd, 5 o'clock p.m., the virtual Inside the Birds happy hour. Tweet us a picture of whatever you're drinking. Raise your glass. Take a picture. <laughs> Tweet it to us at the our, at Inside Birds account, and we'll pick uh, one winner to get the autographed Eagles hat of uh, I'm sorry, the Todd Harriman's autographed Eagles hat. So make sure you're participating as that as we all try to stick together and and show some unity here during these tough times. Uh, that's going to do it for this edition of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles intel. Thanks to our friends at 97.3 ESPN. Make sure you're downloading their free mobile app and checking out their website 97.3 ESPN.com. Uh, I've been on with Shander from 12 to 2. We're going to continue to try to do this from home. Uh, Mike Gill, I know, is, and Hunter Brody have done some shows recently from the Gill Abode back porch. So that's coming out well on 97.3. And uh, also make sure you're checking out Hunter's work on uh, his YouTube page, Sports Talk with Broads on YouTube. And, of course, check out Inside the Birds' YouTube page, too. We've been putting a lot more videos and old podcasts on YouTube, and it's gotten uh, – a lot of great responses, so maybe an Adam and I will do another video like we did last week. Oh, we will, for sure. Oh, uh, yeah, we will, we will. Sure. we will. So, as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the birds. If you're listening to this, you obviously like podcasts, and you probably like music, too. On Spotify, you can listen to all of that in one place for free. That's right, you don't need a premium account. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcast so you never miss an episode. You can download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are. You can easily share what you're listening to with your friends via Spotify's integrations with social media platforms like Instagram. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now. Just search for Inside the Birds on the Spotify app or browse podcasts in the Your Library tab. And follow me, Jeff Mosher, so you never miss an episode of Inside the Birds. Spotify is the world's leading music streaming service, and now it can be your go-to for podcasts, too. 